Good morning, good morning to those of you that are coming in by way of the prayer line and those of you that are coming in by way of Facebook Live. We want to say good morning to our intercessors and God seekers and also to those of you that are coming in by way of Facebook Live whose names that we cannot see. This is the day that the Lord hath made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. To those of you that are coming in by way of Facebook Live and you want to be on the prayer line, instead of on Facebook Live, you can call in at 917-900-1022, access code 892-3928. And there we are still connecting with other intercessors through this fourth hour prayer watch at 5 a.m. I wonder if I can get those of you that are coming in by way of Facebook Live, if you can push the share button as you're coming in. We want to make sure that your community does not miss what God is getting ready to say to us this morning. And we want to make sure that our community is joining us in prayer. If there's ever a time that we need to pray, that time is right now. I know you can feel in the atmosphere that it is time for us to call upon the name of the Lord. So we're making ourselves a community of one. A community of one. A community of one to make sure that all of those that are connected to us are in prayer early in the morning. The Bible says, early, Lord, will I seek thee. Good morning, good morning. Come on in to Facebook. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Listen, I want to be sure and to keep this always in the forefront of your mind that if for any reason we experience some technical difficulty on Facebook Live, you can go to our prayer line. 917-900-1022 access code 8923928 I want to say I haven't done this for a little bit I want to say thank you thank you to those of you that have been sowing into a word of prayer at cash app dollar sign Krista M Tyson thank you you're going to begin to see some changes on the horizon I want to I want you to know that I appreciate you I'm inviting you to join me on Saturday mornings at 5 a.m. Eastern Time for Early Rising Bread. You can join me right here on Facebook and on the prayer line. I'm inviting you to go over to Pastor Krista Tyson Facebook page and like and connect in the next couple of days. Our live Facebook time will stream from there and I want us to all move together. All of us moving together. I don't want anybody to be left out. If you miss a prayer or a teaching, you can also go to YouTube Krista Tyson Ministries and we have begun to place them there. Also, I would like to share with you if you would like to strategically intercede with your hands and fingers in this hour to command, direct and prophesy into your morning and the mornings of others for positive outcomes based upon the word of God. You're welcome to do so by positioning yourselves as you're coming in. Good morning to those of you that are coming in by Facebook Live and also those of you that are still coming in by way of the prayer line. Understand this, the word of God declares that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So we declare what the Bible says. And that is that I will make my prayer unto God and he will, he will hear me. Exactly. And this right here is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. So listen, I won't leave this line anymore without sharing with you that when we close, if you still have a personal prayer request or you want to give your life to Christ, I want you to email me at Krista Tyson Ministries at gmail.com. I want to help you and I want to even direct you to a church in your area or to a minister in your area that can speak to you concerning giving your life to Christ and that also can pray for you. I want to pray with you, but I don't want to um, miss the opportunity to welcome you to be in person with someone praying for you. So now, let me share with you our guest devotionalist and prayer leader on this morning. Our guest devotionalist and prayer leader is Elder James E. Tyson II. 
He is the executive pastor of Christ Church Apostolic of Indianapolis. And let me share this with you now because the word that God is getting ready to speak through him and as he leads us in prayer, I don't want us to miss our blessing by not sowing into this ministry. So his cash app is dollar sign James Tyson 2. Again, that is dollar sign James Tyson and the number 2. I want you to hear God this morning as Pastor Jet shares with us what God is sharing with him. And then he will lead us into a time of prayer and intercession. It's time to pray, people of God. I present to you Pastor James E. Tyson II. Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor James from Indianapolis, Indiana. And I'm excited about being a part of this 5 a.m. devotional with you. And I'm looking forward to seeing what God has to say to us today. Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 22. The Bible says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. I want to zone in primarily on verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and here it is, peace. I want to deal with that today. Today, I want to talk to you about the five rooms of peace. It was social activist and leader of the of India's nonviolent independence movement, Mahatma Gandhi, uh, that said outward peace is useless without inner peace. I'll say it again. Outward peace is useless without inner peace. I believe that there is no statement that could be more evidentially applicable uh, to the response of the kingdom believer uh, to the current state of our country and our world. As we are standing uh, just inside the threshold of a governmental shift uh, and transition in America, while enduring the crashing waves of a global pandemic that has claimed the lives of over 1.2 million people globally. Um, as of November 2020, the circumstances of the present day demand a grounding in inner peace that can only be found in Jesus Christ. If we're honest, if we're honest, this year has been extremely challenging and has shaken us to the very core of our faith. At the same time, God has been intentionally deepening and cultivating our understanding of the power and the personality of the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of us. It is the passion of the Lord that we become, uh, that become a people that is not merely filled with his spirit, but we become a people that exhibit the idiosyncrasies of his spirit. It is not enough to possess the gifts of the spirit, but, but, um, but we must uh, be uh, in possession and we must be in operation with the fruit of the spirit that is expressed in Galatians chapter five. Please understand that if we are going to effectively walk in the spirit, there must be an awareness that as long as the spirit of God inhabits the soul of a human and there that there will always be a level of opposition. I'll say it again. As long as the spirit of God inhabits uh, a human being, one that has flesh, there will always be opposition. The scripture says to us in Galatians 5 and 16, but I say walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh, but the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. So the idea that Paul is promoting is developing the capacity to put your spirit before your flesh. Again, it is the capacity to put your spirit before your flesh. My grandfather, Bishop James E. Tyson, he used to say, and he used to teach us quite often, that the flesh is a great servant 
but it's a terrible master. Pay very close attention, if you will, to Paul's contrast between the works of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit. That word fruit, it means that which originates or comes from something, an effect, result, if you will. But the word works, it means business, employment, that which it, that which anyone is occupied. Catch the principle. The spirit produces, the flesh employs. One more time. The spirit produces, the flesh employs. You will always work harder when you live according to the flesh. So then the fruit of the spirit that is the personality traits and characteristics that can only be yielded by the spirit and the flesh is at opposition to what that produces. There must be an intentional inner grounding in the spirit in order to produce what the text suggests. The first fruit that Paul outlines for us here in Galatians chapter five, the first fruit that he talks about is love. Now, I won't insult your biblical intelligence. However, for the sake of continuity, consider the idea of love in this context. It is not just a regular love, but rather it is an agape love, which is the highest, the highest form of love. When it comes to the scriptures, the term, uh, this term love, agape love, it is defined by God's immeasurable, incomparable love for humankind. It is the divine love that comes from God. Agape is perfect, unrestricted, a sacrificial and pure love. It gives without the expectation of receiving anything in return. Now, here is the challenge when it comes to our flesh. When it comes to our flesh, our flesh, when it loves naturally, we expect something in return. But when it comes to a God type of love, and love that is a part of the characteristics of the fruit of the spirit. It has, it is love that is unconditional. It is without measure. It is uh, without, it is not, it is, doesn't have defiled motives. Now, when it comes to this love, love is very important and it established for us the foundation of the fruit of the spirit. Reason being is because love fosters fear, fosters fruit. One more time. Love fosters fruit. Fruit. The scripture says something very, that is very powerful. In 1 Corinthians 13 and 1, it says, If I speak love, if I speak in tongues, the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging symbol, clanging symbol. If I have prophetic powers and understand the mysteries and all and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but I do not have love, I have nothing. If I give away all that I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. If I am going to walk, listen, if I am going to walk with the intent to love like Christ, the rest of my goals, pursuits, and objectives will become irrelevant if my if love, the love of God, is not my foundation. It is love that serves as the breeding ground for the expression of God's identity through me. So Paul establishes our understanding first with love. Then he uh, then he transitions on to the next personality trait of the spirit that he talks about. About, and that is joy. You know, jo joyology is a very powerful idea to consider because when you review it from an expansive perspective, the scripture teaches us in, in Proverbs that the possession of joy is not external, but it is also my communication when it is a fruit of the spirit. Look at Proverbs 15 and 23. A man have joy by the answer of his mouth and a word spoken in due season 
How good is it? In the New Testament, you see that joy accompanies the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Acts 13 and 52. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. From another perspective, uh, in Psalm 126, that you see joy as a seed does not always look like joy in germination. One more time. Joy as a seed does not always look like joy in germination. Psalm 126 and 5, those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. So, so meaning somewhere between your release and your reap, is a conversion process. God, somewhere between your uh, your <laughs> your release and your reap, there's a conversion process. It doesn't matter what level of trauma that the enemy tries to send to you or tries to send you through. The enemy cannot outrun your joy. Wow. The enemy cannot outrun your joy. Joy, can I prophesy this over you? That joy is about to overshadow you. Glory. So much so. Thank you, Jesus, that the enemy can do absolutely nothing about the joy that's about to come toward you. The joy in your soul will not look like joy in your germination. That, that, that it may come up in tears, but you're about to reap in joy. If you receive that, type that in the comment section. I receive that. Let's keep going here. Now, Here's where the comparative analysis works uh, with the flesh and the fruit of the spirit. All of that when it comes into play. Remember that as long as the spirit of God inhabits the soul of a human being, whatever the spirit produces will be in opposition with the passions of with the passions of the spirit. Listen, whatever the spirit produces rather will be in opposition with the passions of the flesh. Please don't miss it. The passion of the flesh is bent toward happiness. Listen, the passion of the flesh is bent toward happiness, your emotions, but the passion of the spirit is bent toward joy, which is a state of being. Remember, consider Jesus in Hebrews 12 and to looking to Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. When it comes to, when it comes to Jesus, the teaching that he is expressing to us is that joy is not a matter of feeling. Joy is a matter of focus. Listen, joy is not a matter of feeling, but joy is a matter of focus. Had he based sacrificing his life on feeling, all of us would be lost. But so you cannot allow, you cannot allow the shame and the cross to make you forfeit your focus on joy. So the battle today, listen, the battle today that you're dealing with is not a battle for your emotion. Listen, the battle is for your Focus is not a battle for your feelings. It's a battle for your focus. And if you can get your focus right, listen, you, your joy can come into alignment. If the enemy can get you to lose your focus, you'll lose your victory. But I want everybody that is watching me now to say, I will not lose my focus. Say it again. I will not lose my focus. So now we dealt with love. We dealt with joy. Let's get to the focus fruit. And that is peace. When you review peace from the standpoint of fruit or an attribute of the Holy Spirit, it is the peace of the Lord. It is not a random peace, but it is the peace of the Lord. This is consistent with the scripture because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14 and 33, for God is not the author of confusion. Catch the word. That word confusion, it means instability. It means commotion. It means tumult but he is the author of peace. In this text, hear me, Paul is bringing uh, order to a church that is mishandling the gifts of the Holy Spirit and, is, and, is, and it is projecting itself in their corporate worship setting. So he's telling them that what you're doing does not look like God, make that applicable to my life, Pastor James. I'm glad you asked. You cannot separate the personality of God from the gift of God. Again, you cannot separate the personality of God from the gift of God. If 
all of it has been originating by and through the Holy Spirit, you cannot separate who he is to accommodate who you are. Uh, you cannot separate who he is to accommodate who you are. It's all God. It's all his. You know how some people that claim to operate in the, in the prophetic but they're rude as a junkyard dog. You, you cannot do that. When it comes to the gift of the spirit, the gifts of the spirit must come into alignment with the fruit of the spirit. You cannot project the gift without the fruit because the gift is the doings of the Holy Spirit through you. But listen, it is the fruit of the spirit that is the personality of God through activity through you. You cannot separate the practice of the gift from the personality of the fruit. Man, I hope that's making sense to you. You cannot separate the two. So the gifts focus on what he can do, but the fruit focuses on who he is. Meaning what to me, Pastor James? It means that God is calling us to a place of movement and maturity. Peace is, is only something Rather, it is not only something that you can acquire, but it is something that you can mature into. You can become, listen, you can become what you possess. Look at Matthew 5 and 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God, those whose lives reflect the ethics and personality of Jesus will clearly be identified as children of God. So let's get deeper into this. What does that word peace really mean from a biblical perspective? That word peace means shalom. It means shalom. It is it is the condition of freedom from disturbance, whether outwardly as of a nation, from war enemies, or inwardly within a soul. I believe that it is the passion of God for his people to live in peace. I love the scripture and I love the scripture and I want you to apply it to your life. Isaiah 32 and verse number 18 is in the NIV version. Here's what it reads. My people will live in a peaceful dwelling in, in peaceful dwelling places, in secure homes, in undisturbed places of rest. I'll say it again and let that be uh, your word for this morning. My people will live in peaceful dwelling places, in secure homes, and in undisturbed places of rest. So envision this with me. Here's how I saw God uh, showing this uh, for, for this particular setting. Consider peace as a home. And there are five rooms in this home. There are five definitions that I want to bring to the word peace in Galatians chapter 5 that make up this home of peace. And here's what we're talking about. And then we'll get into our prayer. Room number one, first definition, that word peace, it means to be one quietness, rest or set at one again. Now, one of the things that God is desiring of restoring among us and those of us that are watching today is a restoration of relationship. Again, it is the restoration of relationship. Peace is Deprivation is an indicator of relationship dysfunction. Woo! Did you hear what I said? Peace, deprivation is an indication of relationship dysfunction. So apart from fruit, the fruit of peace, it is the reestablishment of intimacy and relationship with God. But Jesus explains in John, uh, in John, the blessing of being set at one with God. John 15 and 4, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by himself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I just believe today that God is setting us back one with him again. I just believe that God is restoring our relationship with him again. Now take these rooms and then we're going to apply them uh, to our prayer targets. Room number two, it means a state of national tranquility, exemption from the rage and havoc of war. Some of you have been in a constant battle for some type of tranquility during 2020, where your emotions are unaffected and your spirit and life is in a state of constant agitation. But here's the word of the Lord over you. 
everything involving your territory will be at peace. I'll say it again. Everything involving, hallelujah, everything involving your territory will be at peace. Everything involving your territory will be at peace. Your mind will be at peace. Your emotions will be at peace. Your job will be at peace. Your family will be at peace. Your marriage will be at peace. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I live in a home of peace. Room three. No, let me get, let me read the scripture to you. Exodus 14 and 13. And Moses said to the people, fear not, stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians who you see today, glory, you will never see them again. God is going to give you such a peace. Hallelujah. That not only glory, not only will you have inward peace, but the environment will have peace. You will not fight the same enemy again. Glory. You will have peace. Room number three. Let's look. I'm running out of time. Peace between individuals. Here it is. Harmony or concord. Ephesians 2 and, and, and 14. For he himself is our peace. Uh, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. 15. By abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in the place of two, so making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. Now, from a con from a contextual perspective, Paul is writing concerning the peace between the Jews and the Gentiles and establishing an essential element in the kingdom of God, knowing what the background is, what the history has been or the traditions have uh, have held against one another, there must be, listen, reconciliation. One of the areas that God is coming after in the spirit is the spirit of hostility today. We've got to come against the spirit of hostility. When you learn how to put your pride aside and allow the characteristics of God and the foundational tenet of the kingdom to take effect, we can see true peace between our brothers and sisters. So God today is calling for peace between our brothers and sisters. You cannot reflect the characteristics of God when it comes to peace and be at, at war with your brothers and sisters. God is bringing peace. Number four, room number four, security, safety, prosperity, and intense joy. Woo! Hallelujah. Philippians 4 and 17. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Listen, God is passionate about the safety of those in this room. I'm not just ref referencing your physical safety, but the spirit of instability and safety in your mind. And in your heart is a concern of God. But the peace of God is being reinstituted in our lives today. Listen, peace affects your emotions. But I want you to take this scripture home with you. And I want you to declare it um, over your day. I want you to declare it as you're going through work. I want you to declare it as you go to bed to sleep tonight. Psalm 4 and 8. In peace, I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, will make me dwell in safety. Take that to bed with you. In peace, I will lie down in sleep. For you alone, O Lord, will make me dwell in safety. Room number five, and here's where we're closing. Salvation peace. Listen, the ultimate level of perfect peace it comes in the security of your soul in the hands of Jesus and the knowledge of knowing where you spend eternity. Hebrews 11 and 13, the Bible talks about those that die in faith. Listen, and it talks about in verse 14, for people who speak of thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire, here it is, a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God 
He is not ashamed to be called their God, and he has prepared for them a city. There is an inward peace, a spiritual peace that these men and women had that was so powerful that they were able to willfully acknowledge, listen, I don't belong here. I know what's happening in America. I know what's happening around the world, but we don't belong here. We belong to a better country. But while I am here, there is an inward peace that has been established in me by the Holy Spirit that allows me to sleep in the middle of storms, to say it is well in the middle of challenges, to say yet I will trust him when my body becomes afflicted, to say thy will be done in the middle of my Gethsemane as I am getting ready to face one of the most challenging experiences of my life. As long as I am in God and God is in me, my spirit stands on this word in Isaiah 49 and 14. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Here it is. Can a woman forget her nursing child that she should have no compassion glory on her son of her womb? Even these may forget. Hallelujah. Even these may forget. Yet I will not forget you. Behold, I have engraved you in the palm of my hand. Your walls are continuously before me. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you for this moment. I thank you, O oh God, that you are not only establishing for us a home of peace, but Lord, I thank you that you have given us rooms of peace. Lord, I thank you that you are establishing, oh God, relationship with you again. You are reconciling, oh God, our relationship with you one more time. Father, I thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. That you are bringing peace to the mind. I thank you that you are bringing peace to the soul. I thank you, God, that you are bringing peace to the environment in the name of Jesus. While our world is in chaos, Father, I thank you, oh God, that there is an inward peace that is established in us that the world cannot take away and that the world cannot comprehend. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray, oh God, even down to the faith of the individual. Father, even during this year, God, our faith has been challenged. Hallelujah. Our belief system has been challenged. But Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you, O oh God, now that we are standing in the belief system and the knowledge of knowing. Hallelujah. That in, it is in you that we live. It is in you that we move. It is in you that we have our being. Father, while our world is in havoc, while our world is God, facing a global pandemic, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, even while we're in the waves of governmental transition, Father, I thank you, O oh God, that while we were birthed in a democracy, glory, we were formed in a kingdom. So, Father, we don't depend on what is happening in the world. We depend on what is happening in the kingdom. And we stand on your word. And we know your word is true. And Father, that brings us a peace that surpasses all understanding. Father, I thank you, O oh God, that you help us to find our pillow in the spirit. Help us to lay our head down. That even while the storms are raging around us, Father, we have a peace in our mind. We have a peace in our heart. Knowing, oh God, that you'll never leave us, neither will you forsake us. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you have engraved us in the palm of your hand. And like a woman can, that cannot forget, oh God, the son that is born from her womb, you cannot forget us. Glory, you cannot forget us. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand for sure. And we stand in a certainty, knowing, oh God, because you cannot forget us, we stand at peace. Glory, I thank you today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, oh God, that those that are struggling in their peace, I pray. Pray, oh God, that you would give them, hallelujah, a calmness. They will not lose their mind. They will not have a nervous breakdown. Anxiety will not consume them. But Father, I thank you that they will lay their heads down and rest. And that they will live in a dwelling place of peace. Father, I thank you that the home is ours and that the rooms are ours. You promise it to us by way of your word. And we depend on you and we trust in you. Father, we don't lean to our own understanding. 
But Father, we lean on you, knowing, oh God, that you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Have your way in our lives. Stabilize our emotions. Stabilize our thought patterns. Stabilize our ideals. Help us to lean, oh God, on the understanding, oh God, that we are a kingdom people and that you are not a negligent father. You are not a negligent king and you will not leave us. And Father, we trust you and we believe you. And it is so. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Go in the peace of God. Believe in him that you will live in a peaceful dwelling place. God bless you in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare and decree that everything that you have said, every word that you have spoken, it is so. God, I declare that we are walking in victory in the name of Jesus. And God, I close the back door. We close the back door with praise. We bless your name. God, we worship and God, we adore you. We magnify you. We give your name all of the praise, dear God, because you are good. And your mercy, yea, yea, masa, endures forever. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for our intercessors. I pray for the God seekers that got up early this morning to call upon your name. Father, I ask you to pour out an abundance of blessing upon them that they have no room to receive. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare that we have the victory. God, I ask you to go with them and they're going out and they're coming in and they're down sitting and in their uprising. Father, those that are going to have to travel over the dangerous streets and highways, I ask you to cover them in the name of Jesus. Keep them from all hurt, harm and danger. Father, in the name of Jesus, until we come together again, we we will bless your name. God, we will give you glory. And God, we will give you the honor in the name of Jesus. Listen, I can't again leave this line without sharing with you that if you still desire prayer you can reach out to me at Krista Tyson Ministries at gmail.com I want to pray with you and those of you that need a relationship with God I want to connect you with somebody I want to talk to you about having a relationship with God until we come together again on tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. the Lord bless you the Lord keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon thee and the Lord be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Let there be peace in the name of Jesus. Please remember to wear your mask and practice social distancing until we come together again on tomorrow in the name of Jesus.